We are at the Columbus Historical Society at COSI, our science center here in Columbus, Ohio. We have been here since February 14th, 2012. We just opened up in time for our city's 200th anniversary. What we're extending in right now is um, part of our exhibit, the Bicentennial exhibit. What we did was we divided it into two segments. We have the uh, prehistoric to 1912 right now, and then in September, we'll turn it over to 1912 to 2012, the next century of Columbus history. 200 years ago, we were designated as the capital city for the state of Ohio. What there was was a settlement called Franklinton, which was on the west bank of the junction of the Sayada and the Olentangy Rivers. Um, the settlement of Franklinton was settled by a gentleman named Lucas Sullivan. He was a surveyor from Virginia and he was given the land in payment for the work he was doing for the government. This was part of the Virginia Military District. He chose 6,000 acres at the confluence of those two rivers and wanted to make it a settlement here and make it worthwhile. He um, started giving lots away to people on Gift Street, which still exists today, for people to come and improve the, the area if they stayed here. And then the state was looking for a spot, a permanent home for the new capital. It had been in Zanesville, it had been in Chillicothe, it had bounced around. And they wanted something a little more centrally located. So Lucas got his gentleman buddies together in Franklinton, and he helped bankroll the purchase of 10 acres of land, not in Franklinton, but on the opposite bank of the river, because the opposite bank of the river does not flood. It's the high side of the river. So they bought this 10 acres of land, and they petitioned the state to put the capital at those 10 acres. Um, they bankrolled $50,000, the 10 acres of land, land for a penitentiary, and it was just too good of an offer for the state legislators to pass up. So on February 14, 1812, um, they designated those 10 acres to be the site for the future capital of the state of Ohio. And from that, Columbus develops. I'd like to show you a couple things that we have in our cases here that help really tell that story of the founding of Columbus. Um, some of the early items um, we have is the compass Lucas Sullivan used to lay out the village of Franklinton, which is the precursor to our city of Columbus. This is not your compass that gets you out of the woods. This is your compass that you use in surveying. So you'd have a stake or a tripod that you would lay that on and you would use it when you're doing your surveying and laying out your, your plot lines and stuff in your area. We also have another compass here. Um, we're big on compasses. This compass was used by Jewel Wright when he platted out Columbus. Now remember, there was no city of Columbus. We had 10 acres of land that was designated as the site for the capital. So once that site was designated on February 14, 1812, then they had to get busy and start platting out the, the lots around that and developing the city of Columbus. We're named Columbus after Christopher Columbus. Um, in Columbus, we have a tradition of very simple names. Um, we started out with Franklinton, named for Benjamin Franklin. We're in Franklin County, again named for Benjamin Franklin. We're the city of Columbus. Um, we built, one of the first streets we built was High Street, because High Street is on the high bank of the river. And the other main thoroughfare is Broad Street, because it's the broadest street in the city. We've got Spring Street, because there was a spring there. We've got uh, Mound Street, because there used to be a Native American mound at the street. Um, we haven't figured out why Ridge Street is named that, though, if there were rich people that lived on it or not. <laughs> Transportation has been very important for the growth of Columbus because as we've talked about, Columbus um, wasn't very accessible. It's a couple Native American trails and a couple small rivers you could maybe canoe down. But we didn't have a, we weren't on the Ohio River, we weren't on, a, on Lake Erie, we're in the middle of the state. So transportation has always been vital to our success and growth. One of the things we did was we were the buggy capital of the world. Um, we made more buggies and buggy related products than anywhere else in the nation. We had a lot of access to wood because we were all um, forested at that time and we also had a lot of agriculture in the area. I think one of the things is to look at the factories and the scale of the factories. Um, those show you how big a manufacturing sites they were and how many people they must have employed at the time. Um, in that business. The Firestone family moved to Columbus and started the Columbus Buggy Company. They were the main buggy manufacturer here in central Ohio and they went on to make cars eventually. One of their cousins was actually working for them at the time and he was a salesman up in the Detroit area. He ran into Henry Ford. Henry Ford was looking for some new tires for his car and his production line to, as the finishing piece for his, his car. And the Firestone cousin said, hey, why don't you try these tires we're using on the buggies? That was the piece that finished the car. So the cousin takes a loan from the um, gentleman here in Columbus and moves to Akron and starts Firestone Tire and Rubber Company up in Akron. This is a Firestone Columbus car. This is one of the early cars that would have been manufactured here in Columbus, Ohio by the Firestone Company. 
you can actually see its relation to the buggy by looking at um, some of the suspension systems, the wheels, and a couple of other things like that um, are really relates back to the design of the buggies that were built here in Columbus, Ohio. Since we were the buggy company, buggies were the main mode of transportation when we were building buggies, people are moving towards cars. We enter in that foray too. We want to we make cars here and turn our buggy companies into car companies. Um, they actually start working with both gas and electric cars. Some of the early cars were actually electric, which is interesting in this day and age that we're still trying to perfect the electric car. Um, but we didn't succeed. There were many factors that went into that. Our 1913 flood was one of them um, that devastated a large portion of our city. Um, but then also our location um, may have a once been a hindrance to that because with you think of the manufacturing centers where the cars were they're on either lakes or major rivers where you could get barges with the iron ore and the coal up and down um, into those factories and you could offload them with you know large steam shovels so it was very easy for the production purposes with us we're a little more centrally located we don't have a major waterway so you would need to bring them in by train um, which we had good trans transportation, but you would have had to brought them in by train or another mode of, of transportation. This car was built in 1910, so flood happens in 1913. So it's around that time that the, the industry starts declining after that. Um, cars become, you know, popularly manufactured in the 20s, 30s, 40s, you know, up to the 50s finally when, you know, most people can afford a car. Columbus has grown and changed a lot since its early days of creation. Obviously, um, transportation has been very important to us because you couldn't get here. So we've relied very heavily on new transportation um, avenues and methods. And I think Lucas would be very proud of the city that we became today. Um, we've got a lot of interesting history, some fun, quirky stories, and uh, just a wealth of things that we've done as a city here that contributed nationally and internationally.